This is an example of what we need taxonomists to fill taxonomy, taxonomical gaps. This is a recent work by Angelica Harding uh, comparing what an expert knew about chameleons and what the data sets told about chameleons. The difference in, 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 in taxonomies were rather large. It make uh, some ripples to discover that data that were supposed to be well known, after all they were vertebrates, were not really at all known. I will give you another example of what we need taxonomies to fill taxonomical gaps and also a specific example of the knowledge transfer gap or gaps that arise from deficient, deficient knowledge transfer. This example deals with uh, the biosphere reserves that you know, they are spread over, all over the world <coughs> and which are places where assumedly biodiversity should be rather well known because uh, they are they can be protected areas. They, those are areas where traditional activities are kept and some other activities are not allowed because we want to preserve those areas as they are. In the entire world there are 600, more than 600 biosphere reserves in 120 countries around the world and in these biosphere reserve areas uh, there are policies, policy implementation, there is research uh, lots of things are done there to preserve the areas as they are. We've studied the biosphere reserves of Mexico and Spain. I will give you an example, which is Mexico, one of the most uh, rich countries in terms of biosphere reserves. There are a lot of them, or, or those uh, described in green over there. And what we did was to set up a workflow trying to see whether there was missing knowledge about the biosphere reserves by looking at how many species we knew from different sources. So the general workflow was like this. We select biosphere reserves, a network of biosphere reserves, and we extract information from different sources. For instance, we go to the management plants of each reserve. Each reserve must have a management plant, a management plan that explains what you can do, what you cannot do, how often you have to do to conduct a survey, and etc. And this is a document which has been prepared specifically for each reserve. So, assumedly, it should contain the most authoritative set of knowledge about the reserve. We resort to scientific literature. We scan the literature and we look for data that coincides with the biosphere reserve. It can be data about the biosphere reserve, or it can be data about the area in the reserve, or for all the data that happen to happen in the same place as the biosphere reserve is. And we can go also to data sets <coughs> that have been made available through GBIF, which might or might not have been published. So we compile lists, and basically we want to get three lists. A list coming from <coughs> management plants, a list coming from literature, and a list coming from uh, datasets. We compare the lists, we review the taxonomy, so we try to homogenize names. That's a very large exercise and quite complicated. This was done with, by one of my PhD students, <coughs> trying to get to reconcile the different taxonomies. Very much what's what you did, what we did yesterday with the, with the whales, trying to get all the whales under a single name so we could compare our lists. We harmonize the taxonomies. We need to use experts. In this case, we, use exper we used experts on vertebrates, which were our target group. We compile the list and tabulate. And finally, we compute intersections between the lists. We go, we put all the lists together, and we see where, where are the coincidences, which species coincide between lists <coughs> and, and between two or between three lists. And from then on, we calculate gaps. We calculate where is the lack of knowledge. So those are our, some examples of <coughs> the data, the data sources we were, we were using, like the red list of the UIUCN, GBIF, BirdLife, Reptile that database. We compiled data from several, several, many sources, and 
finally we got those three lists. <coughs> um, a biosphere reserve, in order to compare the data, we have first to extract the data from the biosphere reserves. So from the map of a biosphere reserve, we added a buffer area because the coordinates of the findings of the records could be uncertain. So we rather arbitrarily added a buffer area that was much more precise than the area as defined by four dots in the management plans. But basically what we did with, uh, with, uh, with GIS was to extract the information that, coins, that was coincidental with a particular reserve in all three sources. <coughs> all right. Um, so once we had lists, we compared them. And we used probability theory. So we had a list in which for the entire Mexican biosphere reserves, we had 1,900 species. This was done with vertebrates only. Only vertebrates, not plants, not invertebrates, only vertebrates. Next, in the literature, we found 1,700 species. There were more species found in the management plants, as expected, because the management plants are specific studies of those reserves than in, in literature. And then we mined the data sets and we found also 1,700 species. The size of these uh, plots here are proportional of this to the number of species, to the number of species richness. So we put all three together and so what were the coincidences between all three sources? And we found that only half of the entire list, of the entire combined list, contained species that were common to all three sources, which left us with another half of species which were missing from a source, at least from at least one source. Gbif had 73% of the species, literature 72%, and management plants 82% of the entire species or taxonomical space. All species combined, combined were 2,400 different species. And they were also combined differently. Well, this section here are species that appear in management plants and literature, but do not appear in GBIF. And this area here, this is proportional to area, uh, this area is proportional to number of species, are species that appear in GBIF and in literature but do not appear in management plants, okay? So we found a lot of exclusivities. 6% of the species only appear in literature. 9% of the species only appear in management plants. 9% of the species only appear in GBIF. 3% both in GBIF and literature, 10% in literature and management plants, 10% in management plants and GBIF. If we split everything by group, taxon group, we see that fish are probably the least, the least known uh, group of species. <coughs> Which means that if you are doing, trying to do something with only one source of information, only management plants, or only mining that data from GBIF, or only looking at the literature, you're missing 70% of the actual knowledge. That's a lack of knowledge transfer. Because the knowledge accrued by management plants should have gone into literature. And the knowledge in literature should have gone into management plants. And all of them should have gone into data sets. If they aren't there, it's because there is no, no, no knowledge transfer. That's a gap. Well, this is the, this is even worse for amphibians. But still we are in the one third common knowledge park. Reptiles is only one third, and not surprisingly, bar birds are very well known, with 72% uh, commonality. And mammals is only 50%. We don't care about mammals, so what? It might happen. Another interesting thing to see is that different reserves behave differently too. Let's go, let's take only the fish and See <coughs> what is the commonality that we saw before for all reserves combined. So we, took, we take all reserves 
we manufacture one single space, which we call Mexico, and we see what's known in Mexico from three different sources. And for the entire Mexico, in terms of biosphere reserves, is one third known from all three sources, two thirds known, two -thirds known to partial sources. But if we take reserve by reserve, and we do the average, it's even worse. If we take reserve by reserve and see what are the, the commonalities in each reserve separately, and we take the average, we say that one single reserve or average will have only a 12% complete knowledge and will have almost a 90% of partial knowledge, including <coughs> lots of exclusive knowledge for the average reserve, which means that some reserves are well known and some others might not be known. If we go reserve by reserve, white means that the data come from more than one source and the colors there are from exclusive stars. So in the, in the case of Los Tuxlas, this is the amount of species, the numbers of species which were known to at least two sources, two or three, and this is the number of species that were know, known only to literature, only to data sets, and only to, to uh, management plans. But this is just one case. We have many cases in which we can see that the amount of commonality can be low. For instance, in this case, everything was known, almost everything was, was known from, from literature. And in this one, everything was known only from data sets. There were no literature, no management plans, no nothing. And these ones also lacked commonalities. The order that I've put here is not arbitrary. It turns out that those reserves here are very low diversity, those are high diversity, those others are high diversity reserves, but also the information gaps are narrow here and wider here. Those reserves here are a wide knowledge gap, those ones here are a narrow taxonomical knowledge gaps. So this technique allows us to, to measure, in a way, how the taxonomical gaps are for special interest areas which are biosphere reserves. If we add more data or additional data, we might get even more information. This case analyzes how many of those species were actually listed as in danger, and we saw, we discovered that even for lists that should be absolutely complete and exhaustive, such as lists that, that describe the species that are under threats and danger, there is a lot of knowledge lacking too. If we go to Spain, we might think, okay, Spain should be similar. No, actually in Spain we found more commonalities, but still a lot of uncommonalities, especially in fish. But we are only dealing with a small fraction of the number of species that we have in Mexico. In Mexico we have almost 3,000 species. In Spain we are dealing only with uh, 500 species of vertebrates. Still, most of this of the country is covered in biosphere reserves. And they tend, they don't tend to coincide with sites with high species richness. <clears throat> Again, if we describe the data as listed or unlisted in special protection plants, we find that there is a lot of missing information about the species that should have been covered by some kind of ruling, legislation, or whatever. For instance, the green sectors here are species that are listed in, in UI, IUCN. And the special, this, however, the Spanish National Catalog is missing species that actually appear in, list, in their lists. That might mean two things. Either there is a gap by which the, speci the Spanish National Catalog are, is missing important species, because those species are listed in the IUCN red list, or IUCN red list is including species that are not in Spain or have been badly classified or whatever. Either the Spanish national catalog is wrong or IUCN is wrong. Which one would you bet? I probably think that the Spanish cat national catalog is wrong. 
However, I happen to know that the Spanish National Catalog was compiled by a set of ichthyologists who know very well the fish list. So in the case of fish, it's actually IUCN which was won. Surprisingly, that is how it works. <coughs> okay. Now we know that there are gaps. We've seen one technique to estimate taxon gaps. How do we estimate the extent of our universe? We need to, ext to estimate what's out there. And Town showed us a number in the morning, a number of ways to estimate the expected number of species, which uh, boil down to looking at the distribution of the species in lists. And this is probably the most, probably the best measure that we have now. The measurement of completeness. As Town explained, completeness is based on the expectation of species, on the, or, or, on the number of expected species, which <coughs> means that for single inventories, Charles' work that looks at the distribution of rare species, single tons, double tons, is probably the way to go. We have one inventory, we look at the species that have been found only once or twice, and we compile Charles two, and then from there on, we use the observed number of species and the expected number of species and get completeness, as you already know, <coughs> very well. However, there are also alternate possibilities. As we saw before, we could use independent listings to try to derive this information. And our question is, which one is more precise? I don't have an answer to that yet. But for multiple inventories, we may use the multinomial distribution, which in fact was also used by Chao to derive his non-parametric uh, system. Her, 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 sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, Anne. <laughs> her non-parametric systems. 